Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's Paul for Friday video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 14 days for today's Friday video. Day 10 will take us to the 18th of July and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the SNGFS and ECM ensembles. Maybe we'll around a couple of weeks, we'll have a look at the CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. So that gets us uh, into uh, early August. I'll get on with that for you. In a moment, just to say that first, the video today was 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. We've also these weekend forecast and the EC42 day as well. Been a busy day of content at Gals Web. Please like, share, subscribe on all of today's videos. Thank you so very much, everybody, for doing that for Gals Weather Vid. Thank you so much. Just start off with a little bit of uh, with a little bit of CT Saturday. So let's do that, shall we? Starting with centering temperature. So yesterday, really boosted things up a lot, actually. Uh, we was at 14.9. Provisional to the 6th, but now we're at 15.5. Provisional to the 7th of uh, July, we added 0.6 of a degree, over half a degree um, for one day yesterday. Still uh, below average, though, still half a degree below the 61 to 90, 90 average, as I say, that is provisional to yesterday to the uh, 7th. So coming out about, um, about at average, but a little bit below, really, uh, for the first week of July. Um, that probably tick up again when it updates tomorrow. I would imagine it might get to the low 16s by the start of next week. But then it will start to edge down again through next week as we have got a cooling trend on the way. So by this time next week, I would imagine that will be solidly in the 15s. So let's have a look at uh, July through the uh, years and uh, some of the, um, you know, more memorable Julys for the century in temperature. CT, of course, is the oldest and most reliable temperature index anywhere in the world, going back to 1659. If we come down to uh, 2023, you can see that, uh, of course, June came in at 17.0, very, very uh, warm, hot June. July will be placed just there. So, of course, last year we had a very hot July. We had a CT of 18.2. Um, and we got to, memorably, 40 degrees as well last July. Very warm July before that as well. 2021 at 17.8. 2020 was quite a cool July at 15.8. Uh, that was our last sort of cool July. Another very warm, hot month in uh, 2019 for July. 17.6. And then, of course, we've got 2018. Uh, we all remember how hot, phenomenally hot, uh, it was in July 2018. We've got into the 19s, 19.2, one of the hottest months uh, on record in this country. Another hot July occurred in 2013 at 18.4 after the long run of below average temperatures through the first half of uh, 2013, most notably March, of course, which was exceptionally cold and snowing we got a hot month in um july 2018 and to be honest we have been in a generally quite a warm trend since that summer of 2013 so we went through the colder cooler period between around 2007 and 2013 um or the first half of 2013 that colder period where we had cooler summers and also colder winters that ended really in in, in the summer of 2013 and since then um you know for the past 10 years we have had a lot of consistently very warm weather there has been some cooler interludes as well we had the from years of course in uh, february of 2018 and uh, and whatnot but generally we've been in a very warm uh, trend to be honest uh, for the past 10 years since that cooler uh, period from 2007 to 2012 or the first half of 2013 ended in the summer of 2013. Anyway back to this on, uh, off on a tangent. So the hottest July on record is 2006 just here. Almost came out with a 20 Celsius CT for that month 19.8. That's the hottest July and the hottest month uh, ever recorded in uh, in, in the uh, UK back to uh, the beginning of the index in 1659. Uh, talking of 2007, of course, that was a proper old washout of a summer and a very, uh, very wet July. Uh, that had a certain temperature of 15.3, so a uh, very cool month uh, with that one. Um, also had another very, very grim July in 2012. This was our last washout summer. 
Uh, again, that one has a searching temperature of 15.6. We see 15.3 there for July 2011 as well. So a couple of really cool Julys in uh, 2011 and also in 2012. Um, and 2012, I'd say, was a proper washout. So, however, we can go even cooler than that. Sometimes we do go under 15 degrees. That's happened for a very long time. But if we go back to 1988, that's the last time we had a 14 Celsius CT July. That one came out at 14.6. That was what, that was one of the worst Julys of the uh, 20th century. But there have been even cooler Julys than that. So if we go back through uh, the index, there's the Daddy of Hot Summers, by the way, 1976. That had a July CT of 18.6. Um, June used to be 17.0, but it's corrected down now to 16.9. And uh, August also a hot month at 17.6 but if we go further back into the midst of time we can actually find uh some julys that come out under 14 degrees so we've got 1922 here which is the coldest july of the uh, 20th century had a july ct of 13.7 <laughs> which is really really cold i have to say but look at august also at 13.6 uh, june at 13, well, it probably wasn't too bad for that era, but would be classed as quite cold now. Um, but July and August of 1922 were absolutely atrocious. That is one of the worst summers of the uh, 20th century. And if we go a little bit further back, on, <coughs> I'm so sorry, but if we go a little bit further back, we find more Julys appearing in the index, you know, that have uh, the CT under. Uh, uh, under 14 degrees, so we've got 1888 here, 13.7 for uh, that one. I don't think we've ever had a July in the 12s. I don't think we have. I think about an August or two that might have dipped into the 12s, or certainly the very low 13s, but I don't think we've ever had a July that's, uh, that's done that. So, looking for a few more Julys that might be in the 13s. We did still get hot Julys, though. You know, even a long time ago, so you've got 1826 here with July CT of 17.9, for example. And then, of course, we've got July 1808 at uh, 18.4. Um, and we probably got to 40 degrees as well in uh, July 1808. We may have done expected it, but we possibly did do. Uh, yeah, so so July, you know, it's the hottest month on average out of the uh, out of the months through the summer, but it can be very cool and very unsettled. So um, we'll wait and see what number gets placed here. But at the moment, it's looking like we will probably be under June. I think. I think we may we may well struggle to get to seventeen point zero, such as we uh, had in June. So so I would think. You know, it's early days, we're only one week in, but I think it is shaping up to be uh, uh, a year where July is actually cooler than the June before it, which is quite unusual for that to happen. It has, has happened in the past, but it is quite unusual um, for that to happen. So we should wait and see uh, what dumper is placed here um, when we get to uh, the beginning of August. And it's going to be very interesting to find out how July pans out, especially in relation to the hot June that uh, preceded it. We shall keep you posted. Right, let's do some forecasting. Man. I hope you enjoyed that little bit of CT Saturday. Nice little feature that I've developed over past, <laughs> over past few months, isn't it, the CT Saturday? Right, let's have a look at the GFS uh, red temperature and precipitation ensembles then for the next couple of weeks. So looking at Swansea today, the red line is a 30-year upper air temperature average for Swansea. Starting off above average still with the upper air temperatures at the moment, but they are coming down. And the trend through the next week, 10 days, looks cooler than average with the upper air temperatures. Of course, when the sun is out, it won't feel too bad, given the strength of the sun at this time of the year. But if you're under cloud and persistent outbreaks of rain, then uh, it will feel uh, quite grim and maybe even a little bit autumnal. So cooler than average upper air temperatures really from like tomorrow or certainly Monday right way through to the end of the ensemble graph. Um, bear in mind, this time last year, we were seeing um, the, uh, the, 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 the spike, wasn't we? We were seeing the, the upper air temperatures on the ensemble graph going up to 20 degrees, even 25 degrees 
than 850 HPA. What a contrast this year to uh, last year. Um, and also, not only cool, but also unsettled. So look at all these precipitation spikes <laughs> that we've got as well. So plenty of rain to come, showers, and or long as well as rain. Remember, Swansea will be a little bit exposed to the Atlantic and the Irish Sea. Um, though areas further east of that, probably not, not as wet about on the grass, but it does look unsettled. Uh, there's no getting around that. It looks like we're in for, a, for an extended period of unsettled, cool, and at times rather wet weather. And the high summer, we are in high summer now, of course, the high summer, um, that, uh, that's not the best graph we've ever seen. Temperature, <coughs> oh dear me. Temperature anomalies shall be 8 to 16th of July, coming out around to a little bit below average. That includes today's very warm temperature. So when today is out of the way, I would imagine this, uh, this anomaly chart will look quite significantly cooler than average by tomorrow. And precipitation anomalies shall be 8 to 16th of July, coming out uh, wetter than normal in most parts of the country. The latest wind from that from EarthNorthSchool.net showed the change taking place with low pressure, quite deep low pressure in the Atlantic, sending a cold front uh, eastwards across the country. That cold front is acting as a trigger as it moves into the hot and humid air to produce those thunderstorms, and then eventually we will open the door to uh, Atlantic-driven weather. And you see that very nicely on the UK Euro run, starting with uh, the chart data uh, for midnight on Tuesday. So the low pressure heading in from off the Atlantic Monday, Tuesday, will bring outbreaks of heavy and persistent rain. We're going to a cool, showery northwesterly wind by Wednesday. There, now what have I done there? So I'll do this by hand. Um, firstly, we try and build up a little bit of a transient ridge from the southwest. Could bring something a bit drier into the south, but by Friday and on into Saturday, we find more low pressure heading in from off the Atlantic, and that could well bring us another bout of uh, wet weather at the end of next week. Icon, again, with that area of low pressure heading in from off the Atlantic from Monday to Tuesday, become quite a significant low off the east coast of Scotland by midnight on Wednesday, pulling in with cool, showery northwesterly winds. And those cool and showery dishes then continue to the end of week. Another low coming in Friday to Saturday, bringing further bouts of wet weather and at that low pressure in control for next weekend. That gets us to midday Saturday, 15th of July, where we are looking really unsettled then. The GFS midnight run, again, bringing low pressure in from off the Atlantic Monday to Tuesday with showers and or longer spells of rain as well. More low pressure heads in from the Atlantic through Friday into Saturday. That could bring a very wet, cool day on Friday into next weekend. Showers Saturday, more low pressure, bring further bouts of rain from Sunday into Monday. It's a conveyor belt of lows. Um, and then beyond that, day 10, the low pressure coming up from the south. That's bringing heavy rain into more southern parts of the country. If it verifies, long way out, of course, that gets out of the way. We pull it down these cool northerly winds. Further low pressures ever far away, even as we come to the end of the GFS midnight run, um, moving towards the final week of July. Back into uh, cool, showery northwest winds there by the 24th of July, which as far as we get to with the GFS midnight run. The GFS 6 set again with low pressure over the country Monday to Tuesday. Further low pressure domination, dominating domination um, through into uh, the second half of next week. This low here could bring a very wet day on Friday. And that low sort of sat over top of the country. There's the green circle of doom. Uh, we're going to find Danny Collins uh, <laughs> made me laugh with that. On Twitter the other day, green circle of doom. Always a bad sign when the green colours turn up in the middle of summer <laughs> over the top of the country. Um, anyway, so showers all along. Thank you, Danny. Uh, showers along the spells of rain there into uh, the weekend. Uh, that low becomes quite a significant feature off the east coast of Scotland by the 16th of July. That brings a bit of summer gales <laughs> into the northern half of the country. Um, beyond that, just a little bit drier down in the south there as we go beyond day 10. A little bit drier and slightly warmer, still unsettled up in the north. And by the end of the GFS 6 Edward, we're still bringing low pressure in 
from off the Atlantic really no sign of, of a break from the uh, unsettled and changeable conditions if you're enjoying the video please can you like share and subscribe thank you so much everybody for doing that drop a comment let us know what you think about this and all of our videos and don't forget to tell friends about that as well because we thank you so much everyone for doing that okay GM again we've got low pressure dominating weather Monday to Tuesday Low pressure to our east on Wednesday, bringing cool showering uh, northerly winds. More low pressure in um, at the end of next week. That could bring some very wet weather Friday into Saturday across the country. Next weekend, looking cool, unsettled and showering. And those cool showering conditions continue up to date, um, which is Tuesday the 18th of July. And then we've got the ECM WF once more, bringing that low pressure in off the Atlantic on Tuesday into unsettled showery dish through the middle part of the week. Another low pressure coming in from the Atlantic Friday into Saturday. Could bring some very wet weather then. And, uh, you know, low pressure just sat over top of the country for next weekend. So, obviously, we'll be unsettled. That's day 10. Trying to raise the heights a little bit from the south, but this low to west of Ivan. Looks like you've got our name on it. Probably will bring another bout of heavy rain through the 18th to the 19th of July there. This is my precipitation forecast based on the HM run from tomatoshow.com. Plenty of heavy showers and or thunderstorms come today. More showers tomorrow as well. And then we've got this wet weather coming in off the Atlantic as we go from Monday into Tuesday. Quite a lot of heavy rain actually Monday to Tuesday across the country. Uh, Showery for the middle of next week and then oh, wait for it. More wet weather coming in from the west as we get to the end of next week and also into next weekend as well. Look at all of that heavy rain across the country. That looks pretty grim for next Saturday. It might be Friday, it might be Saturday, but bouts of heavy rain at the end of the week. And then back into those showery conditions again. As we get to day 10, you'll notice more heavy rain is lurking to the west of Ireland there by day 10. I would imagine that's going to come in uh, across the country through the middle of the following week. Goodness gracious me, this is the option on the table within the ECM ensembles today. Four day 10 gets us to the 18th of July. 51 out of 51 members of the ECM ensembles, all of them, with low pressure dominating over the country and to our east in combination with a ridge of high pressure in the Atlantic, looking uh, very cool and unsettled there. At day 10 and two weeks time, this is the option that we've got. It gets us to the 23rd of July. So low pressure more towards Scandinavia, still with a mid-Atlantic ridge. Probably some sort of upper level trough left through there, but weakening. And uh, so the last week of July might pick up. We might see a pick up in the final week of July. But I don't think we'll see we'll see one before that, you know. Uh, so uh, CFSB2, lastly, it's a 500 millibar height. Not as broken down into week periods. The first week period will take us from the 8th to 14th of July. The coming week, we have low pressure over the country and to West. We've been very unsettled then in the week ahead. Week 2 is going to be the 15th to the 21st of July with low pressure over and to the east of the country, winds coming in from a north to northwesterly direction. Um, so cool and wet there for week two. Week three is going to be the 22nd, 28th of July. Low pressure somewhere between Iceland and Scotland. Income winds off the Atlantic. That's still unsettled then. And week four, which is going to be the 29th of July to the 4th of August, we've still got some low pressure uh, close to the country, particularly affecting the north, but probably still rather showering in all places. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> Never mind, we're done. If you enjoyed the video, please can you like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much everybody for doing that. Drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell friends about Gals Web. Thank you so very much everybody for doing that. Right, I'll just tell you coming up tomorrow. We're going to start off with a 6M UK weather forecast. We will have the fifth update for autumn 2023. We'll be attending the 14th and we're live streaming some long range um, tomorrow evening at 6pm. So Sunday live streams are back. I shall see you live for that one for this video and for today's videos. That's all now. And thanks for watching.